How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, part 31. Fitting a mechanical lubricator to feed steam oil to the cylinder. And this is the mechanical lubricator that I'm going to fit. I bought this lubricator from Blackgates Engineering a while back. It's a very nicely made thing, so it's time to fit it to the engine. The engine, as you can hear, is running in quite well now. It's getting a lot smoother. At the moment I have my hand on the flywheel as you can see and it really is a very powerful engine this one and I want it to stay that way, that's why I need to fit a mechanical lubricator. In my opinion displacement lubricators are okay for small engines. They do work on bigger engines but I prefer a mechanical lubricator because you know how much oil you have in it, you can see the oil disappearing so you know where you are with the lubrication at all times. To run the steam engine properly it needs quite a large boiler and with the large boiler would go a good superheater. Not the little steam dryers that you see on the small models, but a proper superheater, so the steam reaching the engine is very hot indeed. So a constant oil feed is very necessary. The question is, where do I mount the lubricator, and how do I mount the lubricator? I don't really want to drill into the casting. So what I'm going to do is use a substantial metal plate to mount the lubricator on, and then I'm going to hold this plate in position using one of the bolts that holds the sole plate to the box bed. This should be a nice simple job. I've drilled a hole in a piece of metal and yes I think this will work fine. When it's all held down there it's going nowhere. It cannot move because it's hard up against the casting. All I need to do now is mount the lubricator on the piece of metal. And here's the finished shape of the piece of metal with two holes drilled to take the bolts that hold the lubricator down onto the plate and this should be fine. The lubricator is held to this metal plate by two bolts that go through two one eighth of an inch diameter holes in the plate itself. And in this clip I'm using my trusty Barco spanner to tighten the nuts. And please note, I am not rounding the edges with this. Most of the edge rounding I do is not with an adjustable spanner, it's with very small, very slim spanners. Today really I think I should have stopped in bed. It's one of those days, it's not been a good day so far. I've made a complete mess of this. So I made another one the right size this time. I make plenty of mistakes in the workshop. Some mistakes I show on the videos and other parts just go straight into the scrap bin. I'm currently running this engine in, so what I'm going to do is just let it run for a moment or two and I'll stop speaking just so you can hear the good noise that it makes. It sounds especially good in slow motion. And the slower the slow motion, the better it sounds. And that's enough slow motion, now it's back to normal speed. Whenever I build or rebuild a steam engine, I always try and spend plenty of time running it in properly. It's very important, if you do it wrong, you can actually wear the engine out during the wearing in process. And how do I do it? Well, it's simple really. The secret is plenty of oil and don't over tighten the bearings to start with. When the engine has been running on the bench for about a week, maybe an hour a day, then you can start to tighten the bearings slightly. But once again, don't over tighten them because you can do a lot of damage if you're very ham fisted. There are no torque wrenches required at this scale, it's all done by feel. What I'm doing at the moment though is the opposite of tightening bearings, I'm dismantling one. This is the front eccentric that controls the engine when it's going in the forward direction. The reason I've taken off the bottom part of this eccentric is because I need to modify it so I can connect a link to it to drive the lubricator. By far the simplest method would just be to drill a hole in the eccentric, about here, and then I could just use a piece of bent piano wire to drive the lubricator. But no, that's very unmechanical, so I did it this way. I machined a small block of gun metal and then silver soldered that to the bottom part of the eccentric. I drilled a 1 8 of an inch diameter hole in the block, which I'm currently tapping 4BA, 
and I rounded the edges of it, so it really looks like it's part of the eccentric. After applying the usual copious amount of lubricating oil, I'm about to reassemble the eccentric, but I'm not going to show you that because it was very boring. It was just about as boring as removing it. What I also didn't show was the enlarging of the hole in the arm on the lubricator. But you don't need to see that either. It's quite simple. I just drilled a bigger hole in it. Then I cut a thread in this hole with a 4BA tap. I temporarily put two 4BA brass bolts in there, measured the distance between them and made this. Links like this are really simple to make. You just machine two collars in the lathe, and in this case, I just cross drilled a couple of holes, 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter, and then silver soldered the bar in, which is also 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. Simple, effective, and more than strong enough to do this job. In this clip, you can clearly see how the lubricator works. The arm connects to a reciprocating arm, which is on a one way clutch, and then there's like a crank pin which lifts the plunger up and down and pumps the oil from the tank up to here. This is a check valve or clack valve, and this is how the oil is fed into the steam chest and subsequently to the cylinder. Whenever you do any piping that's carrying oil, always test it. When using very thin piping like this, it's quite easy to put too much silver solder on and block up the pipe at one end, or both ends. I've done this on many an occasion. It wouldn't be quite so bad if it was a steam pipe, because as soon as you connected it up you would realise, oh no steam's coming out of the pipe, it must be blocked. But when it's an oil pipe, you don't know. The only way to find out is wait a while and see if any oil comes out of the exhaust. The problem is, particularly if you're running on superheated steam, by the time you realise there's no oil coming out of the engine, the cylinder bore and also possibly the piston rings could be damaged. So I always do this, I leave the pipe disconnected and run the engine. While I've been running this engine on compressed air, I've been injecting some oil into the airline. But now I have a lubricator, I won't have to do that if this works. And you will see after a while, a very small blob of oil starts to appear at the top of the pipe. And here comes another one. Oh, the excitement, and it's only taken about 10 minutes. And that's enough of that, I don't want anyone getting too excited. And now I've clearly seen oil being pumped up the pipe, I can connect the clack valve. Now I can steam this engine with confidence because I know that as long as the lubricator is full of oil, it's getting pumped regularly into the steam chest. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. I'll just leave you with the engine running so you can see the oil pump working. <laughs>